there's two main reasons why patients come off BTK inhibitor-based therapy. One is for toxicities and, and, and intolerance. The other is for resistance. In patients who are coming off because they're progressing on a BTK inhibitor, I think it's important to have a discussion about how we manage those patients because we have seen patients have explosive disease if we abruptly stop the BTK inhibitor, particularly in those patients who are progressing. I wonder if uh, you can, Carolyn, you can give us your practice on how you manage those patients progressing on a BTK inhibitor? I, I think one of the, the, the interesting uh, uh, presentations at this ASH 2019 meeting was the update of the ECOG 1912 study that didn't really, not to insult them, didn't show a lot of uh, uh, new information, but did comment on the, the population of patients who stopped the ibrutinib for intolerance and then obviously at that point were doing well. They'd had a response to the drug. They didn't have treatment requirements, so they were simply followed. And the median time to needing a next treatment was around two years. Um, and that actually has been my experience as well. We have always, when the patient stops therapy because they choose to, if you can't manage the adverse event uh, well enough, and then they wish to discontinue. I wouldn't normally immediately move to another line of therapy if they don't have treatment requirements. And I have seen many patients go for a very long time because obviously we're using ibrutinib now in a very different context from the original patients in the phase one studies who were highly refractory and um, you know, nearly dead before they started on the drug. When they stopped the agent, their disease took off. That's not true for most patients today being treated with these agents. Um, from a true progression perspective, there's still so much debate about what to do with a lymphocytosis change. And you've got the company providing you with advice, oh, you shouldn't worry about it until it's more than a certain level. But, but in all honesty, the, the studies originally, they did have a, a treatment tool progression. If the lymphocyte count is doubling and it's, the patient's still asymptomatic, to me that is overt progression and I would, as you're saying, you know, plan to move to a next therapy, not necessarily as an emergency. So, so, so patients who have a lymphocyte progression and have, even if they have no symptoms, I do think that that's a patient who still needs to be transitioned to another therapy. Um, and I wouldn't leave them off treatment for a long time and just stop the drug. If they're actually clearly progressing, I tend to, to, to move to another therapy directly. For lymph node progression, I think that's much more concerning. And then you've always got this risk of, you know, the rare patient who develops Richter's. Usually, um, lymph nodes, when they occur on a BTK inhibitor, those are the patients that I think tend to take off if the drug is stopped. I, I, I'm much more quick to transition um, and transition very closely, even with overlap between the abrutinib and the venetoclax in a patient who has lymph nodes as their, as their progression. S Stephen, do you routinely overlap therapy if you're transitioning from a BTK inhibitor to venetoclax-based therapy? So, uh, unfortunately, we, we don't often have that oppor opportunity. Um, it, most, many of our patients are treated on uh, clinical trials and there's a washout period, uh, but we, we do notice some patients when you s pause the BTK, even for surgery, they can have um, a fairly uh, rapid uh, progress in their disease. Um, the thing I wanted to add to what Carolyn was saying before is that the effect of stopping the BTK depends on their disease status at the time of cessation. So if they've had a complete remission, if they've been on it for a while and they've got a deep complete remission, then they're likely to have quite a durable uh, treatment-free period when you stop it. But if their disease isn't controlled and you stop it, they're likely to progress uh, much sooner. So I guess an assess if a patient has to come off the drug, assessing their disease status at the time can be uh, useful to sort of predict what's likely to happen.